Time now for the morning rush. We begin our election coverage with News 13 Sarah Yingling. She is covering one of the biggest races this morning. Good morning, Sarah. David, the gubernatorial race is turning out to be a close one, much closer than experts imagined early on. Right now, polls show that Democrat Michelle Lujan Grisham is slightly ahead of Republican Steve Pierce. Now, our political expert is predicting Michelle Lujan Grisham to win. But he says Pierce has the opportunity to pull out a win if he's able to increase his base turnout down south and in Bernalillo County. Both candidates agree New Mexico isn't spending enough on education. If Lujan Grisham is elected, our political expert says expect to see more money spent on pre-K education coming from the permanent fund, while Pierce says he'll look to the public education department to fund his proposals. Back to you. On to this, voters will start heading to the polls in about 15 minutes. Polls across the state set to open. This morning, nearly 70 voting centers will be up and running in Bernalillo County. County officials still say they anticipate a high voter turnout today. This despite a record number of more than 430,000 New Mexicans who cast their ballots early. Bernalillo County clerk says most people voting are 60 and up. Women are outvoting men 2 to 1. Kristen. Sunny skies across the state today. No showers expected. However, our next big weather maker comes in the form of a cold front moves in tonight across the northeast. We're going to be looking at some fog, low clouds as well as some light showers within those low clouds. As we get into tomorrow morning, visibility likely to be reduced in that area. Crystal. The battle for the congressional seat in New Mexico's Southern District is really heating up this morning. Republicans looking to hang on to that spot being vacated by Steve Pierce. It's not going to be easy, though. Democrat Societal Torres Small is facing off against Republican Yvette Harrell. The latest journal poll shows Yvette Harrell with a 1% lead over Torres Small. The seat is considered a toss-up as Democrats try to gain control of the House. The seat is getting national attention. District also covers the state's 180-mile border with Mexico, which which is the second reason the nation is watching. And House District 2 is just one of more than 20 seats where an incumbent is not in the running. Both parties are fighting for the seat in the race for the control of the U.S. House today. Now, as it stands, Republicans hold 235 congressional seats. Democrats hold 193. Now, the latest poll predictions from CBS show around 30 seats are toss-ups this morning. The majority of those are currently held by a Republican. But the latest CBS News Battleground Tracker poll shows Democrats are expected to win 225 seats in the House. This morning, there is one U.S. Senate seat representing New Mexico up for grabs between incumbent Democrat Martin Heinrich and Republican Mick Rich and Libertarian Gary Johnson. Recent polls show this will likely stay blue with 47 percent of the votes likely going to Heinrich. That's what Democrats are banking on as they try to flip the U.S. Senate. This morning, Republicans hold the majority with 51 seats to 49 Democratic seats. Political experts say Republicans have a strong chance to keep their Senate majority. Today, the city of Albuquerque and the city of Santa Fe are helping voters get to the polls by offering free transportation. Now, all rides on ABQ rides, fixed route buses and sun vans will be free. A free shuttle will also offer rides to Washington Middle School near 10th and Central. Now, there are nine pickup locations along that route. You can also find a free ride in Santa Fe via their public transportation system. And of course, KRQE News 13 is your election headquarters. We will be watching the polls and numbers as they come in tonight. Stay with us on air, online, and on our KRQE News app. Kristen? Today's Metro Threat Index only at a 1 for some chilly temperatures we have this morning in the 40s, but no problems whatsoever this afternoon as we're talking 60s, sunshine, and wind less than 15 miles per hour. Crystal? On to news new this morning, a Wisconsin couple is back on the road after police tracked down their stolen car. Larry and Sherry Gustafson stopped in Albuquerque on their way to their new Arizona home. Police say yesterday morning their car was stolen after their hotel room was broken into and her purse was taken with the keys inside. Police say thieves also sold their phone, which was returned to police by the buyer after they saw a notification that it was stolen. Police say that buyer helped them find their car. An Albuquerque family blamed their home burning down on strangers illegally shooting off fireworks. But now we are learning that's not exactly the case. The Monhead family said illegal 4th of July fireworks landed near their propane tanks, causing an explosion. The Bernalillo County fire officials say that a family member eventually admitted to lighting fireworks and despite being doused in water, the still smoldering fireworks were placed in the back of a pickup truck, causing the fire to break out. Kristen. 
Time now for a check on your Tuesday morning commute. We do have one crash to tell you about. This is southbound cores on the on-ramp to eastbound Paseo. Some minor delays in the area, but looking outside, we've actually got pretty good conditions at the Big Eye. I'll keep eyes on that for you throughout the morning. And finally, here's a story that's going to put a smile on your face. A woman running in Sunday's New York City Marathon got the surprise of a lifetime. Only 10 miles left to go. Caitlin Coran's boyfriend of four years hops over the barrier, drops down to one knee. You guessed it. He asked for her hand in marriage. She said yes. The couple shared a quick hug. Then Coran went on to finish the race. Her now fiance, though, is meeting her at the finish line where the engagement and the completed marathon were celebrated. Big congrats to them this morning. Something neither will never forget. Oh, yeah. yeah. Love it. Stay with Good morning. A live look out of our Silver City this morning. Sun coming up. We need that sun to help warm us up. Down to the 30s, 40s, and 50s to start. But today we're talking temperatures in the 60s here in Albuquerque. No reason not to head out to the polls. The weather definitely on our side this year. We've got even the wind cooperating out of the west northwest about 5 to 15 miles per hour. Now, as far as the showers go, those actually come in later on tonight into tomorrow, but not for Albuquerque. We are talking sunny skies here in the Metro. Those showers will actually be out across the eastern side of the state behind a cold front. It's going to be in the form of light rain, light drizzle, and even a little bit of light snow. So definitely a plan ahead for tomorrow's morning commute. Let's now take you to the five facts. At number five this morning, unique homes and buildings in the Knob Hill area will soon be highlighted. The Knob Hill Neighborhood Association is registering these spots and adding plaques to explain their ties to history here in the Duke City. One property is the Ernie Pyle House, which was once home to the famous American war correspondent. The plaques are paid for by the property owner. Number four now, an Albuquerque family known for its Christmas decorations is now missing their holiday cheer. This morning, they're asking for your help. The Romero family goes all out on Christmas, decorating their home near Gun Club in Isleta. They say someone stole the majority of their setup, though, over the weekend from inside their shed, taking large blow-up decorations to include a six- to eight-foot-tall Christmas Ferris wheel and even some handmade decorations. The family says they've been collecting all of this for about 30 years. This year, they only plan to put up lights. If you think you recognize any of the stolen decorations from previous years, we have a link on our website where neighbors are taking tips. At number three, looking at dry conditions for the next several days here in Albuquerque. Seven-day forecast shows 60s today and tomorrow down to the 50s by the time we hit Friday. Again, those showers likely to be from the central mountains towards the eastern state line. At number two this morning, both Republicans and Democrats are pulling out all the stops as the fight over control of the state ramps up. Now, today, Democrats are fighting to take back full control of the state. In order to do that, Democrats will likely keep control of the state House and state Senate, but they must win the governor's race for that political trifecta. Republicans are putting up a strong fight as well. Today, Democrats hold the majority in the state House by only six seats. In the state Senate, Democrats hold a 10th seat majority over Republicans. On to number one now. The battle for the congressional seat in New Mexico's Southern District is really heating up. Republicans looking to hang on to the spot being vacated by Steve Pierce. It's not going to be easy, though. Democrat Societal Torres Small is facing off against Republican Yvette Harrell. The latest journal poll shows Yvette Harrell with a 1% lead over Torres Small. This seat is considered a toss up as Democrats try to gain control of the U.S. House. That is why it's gaining national attention. Another reason due to concerns of border safety. That's giving the race national attention because this district covers the state's 180-mile border with Mexico.